हेलो स्टूडेंट्स वेलकम टू ईपीजी पाठशाला आई एम डॉक्टर आयुषी पालीवाल फ्रॉम यूनिवर्सिटी ऑफ दिल्ली सो टुडे वी आर गोइंग टू डिस्कस अबाउट द मॉड्यूल मेटल ऑक्साइड सेमीकंडक्टर डायोड फ्रॉम द पेपर इलेक्ट्रॉनिक्स सो स्टूडेंट्स लेट अस सी व्हाट वी आर गोइंग टू लर्न in this module first we will study the energy band diagram of an isolated metal adjacent to an isolated p type semiconductor second we will consider or we will discuss the energy band diagram of metal semiconductor contact in thermal equilibrium next we will also study the current transport in metal semiconductor junction fourthly we will study about the metal oxide semiconductor diode and we will also study the different biasing conditions of ideal mos diode La this in the second last we will study about the interface traps and oxide charges, and lastly the CV characteristics of ideal MOS capacitor will be discussed in this module. So students, let us start with the basic introduction about the module. First practical semiconductor device was the metal. semiconductor contact in the form of a point contact rectifier in 1998 shortke suggested that the rectifying behavior could arise from a potential barrier as a result of a stable space charge in the semiconductor due to metal contact known as shortke barrier whereas the iv characteristics they are very similar to those of pn diode metal semiconductor contacts can also be non rectifying that is the contacts they has the negligible resistance regardless of the polarity of the applied voltage and this is the ohmic contact so all semiconducting devices as well as ic's they need ohmic contacts to make connections to other devices in an electronic system let us see how these the how does the energy band diagram of the metal in contact with the semiconductor gets modified energy band diagram of an isolated metal adjacent to an isolated n type semiconductor so students this figure represents the energy band diagram of two isolated metal and an n type semiconductor placed close to each other the symbols used in the figure represents the following phi m is the work function of metal phi s is the work function of semiconductor chi is electron affinity ec is conduction band energy level ev is valence band energy level ef is fermi energy level so in this certain assumptions are taken for a short key contact which are number 1 an isolated n type semiconductor is selected secondly work function of metal is greater than that of a semiconductor so the condition for integration is initially metals and semiconductors are isolated but when both are integrated 
then the following condition should always be considered first the fermi level energy level basically should align second the vacuum level should remain continuous let us now discuss the energy band diagram of metal n type semiconductor contact in thermal equilibrium so this figure represents the metal and n type semiconductor junction in thermal equilibrium in order to align the fermi levels the conduction and the valence band on the semiconductor side bend upwards so electron on the metal side have lower energies than the electrons on semiconductor thus electrons transfer from semiconductor to the metal and the electrons move from semiconductor to metal leading to space charge region due to mobile carriers in the metal side and a depletion region towards the semiconductor side due to immobile carriers so this figure shows the charge and the electric field distribution across the junction let us now discuss about the current transport for the metal semiconductor junction now on forward biasing the semiconductor that is negative and the positive on the metal width v is reduced so the electrons can flow easily from semiconductor to the metal while in reverse biased width v is increased thus less electrons are transferred from semiconductor to the metal as they cannot flow easily if some forward biasing is applied then there is no change for barrier height for the electrons on the metal side because of the shift of fermi energy level but more current flows as more electrons are transferred from semiconductor to the metal so net current flows in the forward direction if some reverse biasing is applied then current from the metal to the semiconductor remains the same as shown in this figure but the electrons from semiconductor to metal decreases so a very less current in reverse biasing is there thus n type semiconductor with the work function of metal greater than the work function of semiconductor is a schottky contact since it offers resistance for the flow of electrons from semiconductor to the metal so this figure shows the energy band diagram of isolated metal adjacent to an isolated n type semiconductor now students there are certain assumptions which are taken for the ohmic contact which are number 1 an isolated n type semiconductor is selected number 2 work function of metal is less than that of semiconductor electrons will transfer from metal to semiconductor till the fermi energy levels of both are aligned as shown in this figure which shows the energy band diagram of metal n type semiconductor contact in thermal equilibrium so here a positive space charge region will be formed in the metal due to the transfer of electrons the electrons cannot be transferred from semiconductor 
to the metal as work function of metal is less than that of semiconductor as the electrons in the metals are more energetic and can transfer from metal to semiconductor thus space charge region is formed on both the sides so it does not show the rectifying behavior it does not offer any resistance whether it is forward biased or reversed biased thus the contact is ohmic to conclude the electrical nature of ideal ms contacts are as follows if the work function phi m is greater than phi s then for n type we have the rectifying junction and for p type we have the ohmic junction now if phi m is less than phi s then we have the ohmic junction for n type semiconductor and rectifying junction for p type semiconductor metal oxide semiconductor mos diode mos diode is a very useful component of the most of the vlsi mosfet devices so a basic mos consist of three layers as shown in this figure the top layer is a conductive metal electrode the middle layer is an insulator of glass or silicon oxide and the bottom layer is another conductive electrode made out of crystal silicon this layer is a semiconductor whose conductivity changes with either the doping or the temperature so the schematic of the mos diode is clearly shown in this figure ideal mos diode ideal mos diode is defined as first at the applied bias of 0 volts the band gap is flat or it is generally referred as the flat band condition in other words the energy difference between the metal work function q phi m and semiconductor work function q phi s is zero under any biasing condition the only charge that exits are those which are there in any semiconductor and an equal and opposite sign charges on the metal surface adjacent to the oxide now here there is no carrier transport through the oxide under dc biasing conditions or the resistivity of the oxide is infinite that is oxide is a perfect insulator devoid of any charges so this figure shows the energy band diagram of an ideal mos diode under zero applied bias where q phi is a work function q chi represents the electron affinity eg is the energy band gap ec and ef are the conduction and the fermi energy bands ev is the balance band now here s superscript corresponds to the silicon and m corresponds to the metal now when biasing is applied across an ideal mos diode there may be three cases which exist namely the accumulation depletion and inversion let us now discuss about the different biasing conditions of an ideal mos diode let us discuss about the case first where we apply a negative voltage that is v is less than 0 as shown in this figure now when a small and negative bias is applied on the metal side fermi level is raised by an amount qv the schematic under this negative biasing condition is shown in this figure a 
and the energy band diagram is shown in the figure b on application of applied voltage v the vacuum level rises by an amount qv as phi m and chi they should remain unaffected so bands near the semiconductor surface they are bent upward ev ei and ec so no current flows in mos irrespective of v the fermi level in the semiconductor they will remain constant the vacuum level must bend up gradually to accommodate the applied v from the semiconductor side since oxide is assumed to be charge free the lower edge of the oxide conduction band will bend linearly so the negative applied bias that is if we apply minus v on the gate it implies that negative charge on gate is producing equal and opposite charges in the semiconductor by attracting holes near the oxide semiconductor interface therefore there is an enhanced concentration of holes it occurs near the semiconductor surface with an consequent upward bending of energy levels this is called as surface accumulation condition so according to the expression of carrier density in the semiconductor we have pp equal to ni multiplied by exponential ei minus ef by kt the upward bending of energy band causes increase in ei minus ef implying the enhanced concentration of holes near the oxide semiconductor interface which is called as the accumulation condition let us now discuss the case second in this case holes are pushed away from the oxide interface by applying a small positive voltage that is v greater than 0 this leads to the formation of depletion region in semiconductor near the interface having mainly the negative acceptor ions termed as the depletion condition so the schematic under this biasing condition is shown in this figure a and the energy band diagram is shown in this figure b since the hole concentration in depletion region is very much less than the concentration of holes in neutral region of semiconductor separation between ef and ev is increased at the interface causing a downward bending of energy levels ec ev and ei let us now discuss the case third that is for a large positive applied voltage v greater than 0 there's a downward bending of the bands occurs and when ei touches the ef at the surface then semiconductor surface becomes intrinsic np equal to ni so for large v ei crosses the ef and conduction band becomes closer to ef instead of the valence band that is minority carriers electrons are attracted to the interface semiconductor surface contains more electrons than the holes this means that surface gets inverted from p type to n type so the thin region xi where electrons concentration exceeds the hole concentration is called as the inversion layer so the schematic under this biasing condition is shown in this figure a and the energy band diagram is shown in this figure b
So in this biasing condition, minority carriers NS becomes more than the majority charge carriers. Once the inversion occurs at the surface, further increase in the voltage V will induce practically all additional negative charges in the inversion layer. Interface traps and oxide charges. The MOS diode is generally affected by the charges present in the oxide and traps at SiSiO2 interface. So this figure shows the different charges present at the interface. Let us now discuss the first type of charge that is interface trapped charge QIT. It is due to the SiO2-Si interface properties and dependent on the chemical composition of this interface. The interface trap density is orientation dependent. For example, in 100 orientation, the interface trap density is about an order of magnitude smaller than that in 111 orientation. So 450 degree, degree Celsius hydrogen annealing. The value of interface trap charges for 100 orientation silicon can be as low as 1010 centimeter minus 2. So students, let us study now about the fixed oxide charge. The fixed oxide charge is located within approximately 8 nanometers of the SiO2 Si interface. This charge is fixed and cannot be charged or discharged over a wide variation of surface potential. Generally, this fixed charge Qt is positive and depends on the oxidation and annealing condition and on silicon orientation. It has been suggested that when the oxidation is stopped, some ionic silicon is left near the interface. It may result in the positive interface charge. Typical fixed oxide charge densities for a carefully treated SiO2 Si interface system, they are about 1000 10 to the power 10 centimeters square for 100 surface, and it is about 10 to the power 10 centimeters square for 111 surface. Let us now study about the oxide trapped charge QOT. So oxide trap charge, they are associated with defects in SiO2. These charges can be created, for example, by X-ray radiation or high energy electron bombardment. The trap are distributed inside the oxide layer. Most of the process related oxide trap charge can be removed by low temperature annealing. Let us now study about the mobile ionic charge QM. The mobile ionic charge QM such as sodium or other alkali ion are mobile within the oxide under the raised temperature and high electric field operation. It may cause stability problem in a device. Let us now discuss about the CV characteristics of ideal MOS capacitor. MOS can be said as the parallel placed capacitor with SiO2 as the dielectric surface charge layer in semiconductor under metal gate which is modified by V. Hence the total voltage will be the sum of the voltage across the oxide that is V oxide and across the semiconductor that is psi semiconductor. Thus the total applied voltage will be the sum of the two where V oxide is the voltage across the oxide and psi semi is the voltage across the semiconductor.
where potential across the oxide is given by V oxide is xi naught D naught equal to minus modulus QS by C oxide equal to minus modulus QS D naught by epsilon oxide. Now, where xi naught is the field in the oxide of thickness D naught, QS is the charge per unit area in semiconductor. C naught is epsilon oxide by D naught, which is the oxide capacitance per unit area. Epsilon oxide is the permittivity of oxide layer. Thus, the total voltage V will be minus modulus QS by C naught plus psi S. So, differentiating the equation 18 with respect to V and rearranging the terms, we get 1 by minus modulus of dQs by dV equal to 1 by C oxide minus d psi semiconductor by dQs. So, small signal capacitance C of MOS capacitor is C equal to dQm by dV equal to minus dqs by dv where qm equal to minus qs and qm is the charge on the metal oxide on the metal side basically so therefore 1 by c equal to 1 by c naught plus 1 by cj where cj is equal to minus dqs by d psi s equal to epsilon s by w which is nothing but the semiconductor space charge layer capacitance. Now, where epsilon S is the permittivity of semiconductor and W is the depletion width. This implies C by C naught equal to 1 by 1 plus C naught by Cj. So, for a given oxide thickness D, C naught is constant and independent of applied voltage V. This implies if voltage dependent Ci is known, ratio C by C naught can be plotted with V. So using the expression of the total voltage in terms of the maximum depletion width, C by C naught equal to 1 by root of 1 plus 2V C oxide squared by Q epsilon S Na where Cj is C, C oxide by C oxide minus C. So total capacitance decreases with increase in voltage while surface is being depleted. When V is less than zero, no depletion region is there, which leads to the accumulation of holes at semiconductor surface. This implies the total capacitance C is approximately C naught, which is equal to epsilon oxide by chi naught. So here, C J increases by epsilon S by LD, and C is approximately equal to C naught. When V is greater than zero, W increases, and C J equal to epsilon S by W decreases. That is. C decreases. When V is very much greater than 0, which is approximately Vt, W is approximately Wm, and there is no change in W with V. Therefore, at V equal to Vt, psi semiconductor is approximately psi semiconductor inversion. So, the threshold voltage at the onset of strong inversion, that is Vt, equal to QNA WM by C oxide plus psi semiconductor inversion, which is equal to root of 2 epsilon S QNA multiplied by 2 psi B by C naught plus 2 psi semiconductor equal to minus QS by C naught plus psi semiconductor inversion. So at strong inversion, CJ equal to epsilon S by W and C naught equal to epsilon naught x by chi naught. So the minimum capacitance is given by C min equal to C naught Cj by C naught plus Cj. Putting the value of C naught and Cj, we get 
epsilon naught x by d plus epsilon naught x by d multiplied by wm. So we can plot the CV curve which is shown in this figure which is measured by superimposing a small AC signal on the DC bias. So in depletion or accumulation regimes, there is a change in the charge in response to the applied signal which requires the flow of majority carriers that is move in or move out of the space charge region. Relaxation time tau c is approximately 10 to the power minus 12 seconds for signal frequency. So when omega tau c is less than 1, the CV curve is frequency independent. However, in inversion regime, charge flow in response to the applied signal may also occur by the movement of minority carriers between the inversion layer and the neutral semiconductor and MOS shows strong frequency dependence. If frequency is low, so that the generation recombination rates in surface depletion region are equal or faster than the gate. So students, let us summarize what we have learnt in this module. Firstly, we discussed about the energy band diagram of an isolated metal adjacent to an isolated semiconductor. Next, we discussed about the energy band diagram of metal semiconductor contact in thermal equilibrium. Thirdly, the current transport in metal semiconductor junction was also discussed. Next, we discussed about the metal oxide semiconductor diode, that is, MOS diode, and the different biasing conditions of an ideal MOS diode were discussed. Next, we discussed about the interface traps and oxide charges in this module. Lastly, the CV characteristics of ideal MOS capacitor was also discussed. Thank you.